This chapter will introduce you to all of the components that go inside of a computer case start One point one welcome. People prepare for work in the information technology fields by earning certifications, seeking formal education, and by experience through internships and jobs. In this chapter, you will learn about all the components that make up a PC starting with the case that houses all of the internal components. Computers, computer components, and computer peripherals all contain hazards that can cause severe injury. Therefore, this chapter begins with safety guidelines that you should follow to prevent electrical fires, injuries, and fatalities while working inside a computer. You will also learn about electrostatic discharge ESD, and how it can damage computer equipment if it is not discharged properly. It is important to not only learn about computer components, but also build hands-on skills. In this chapter you will have a in which you will disassemble a computer so that you can become more familiar with all of the components and how they are connected. Shown cards and storage drives. You will also learn about the connectors, ports, and cables. This chapter will introduce you to all of the components that go inside of a computer case starting with the motherboard. You will learn about all the internal components that are connected to the motherboard, including the power supply, the central processing unit, CPU, random access memory, RAM, expansion cards, and storage drives. You will also learn about the connectors, ports, and cables that physically connect the devices to the motherboard. It is important to not only learn about computer components, but also build hands-on skills. In this chapter you will have a in which you will disassemble a computer so that you can become more familiar with all of the components and how they are connected. Home Next One point one personal computer safety. Scroll to begin. Incomplete one point one point one. What is in a computer? Complete one dot one dot one dot one. Video explanation. What's in a computer? One dot one dot one dot one. Video explanation. What's in a computer? Select play to view the video. Access the transcript here. Hello everyone, let's take a look at what's inside of a computer. Now to start off, computers have changed drastically. What we can see... ...here is this little computer can do everything we see on my desk right now. It can connect to speakers and a monitor. Hello everyone, let's take a look at what's inside of a computer. Now to start off, computers have changed drastically. What we can see here is this little computer can do everything we see on my desk right now. It can connect to speakers and a monitor, keyboard and mouse, and even a webcam and a microphone. It used to take a room just full of mainframes to do what this little single board computer can do. Also, our computers are drastically changing because now we have integrated computers and smartwatches and even health and fitness trackers. It's astounding where we're at now. So let's talk about what a computer does. A computer is going to take input. And by taking input, it's then going to store it in memory. It'll be processed and then be provided as output. So let's chat about it. We've got these input devices here. I've got a keyboard and a mouse. I've got a microphone. Then I've got output. I've got speakers. Here, I have my monitor. Also, there's another input device sitting right here staring at me. It's my webcam. That's going to take in data as well. So let's change it up and talk about some of the other components in a computer. So those components on the outside got to connect somewhere. So we can take a look at this box. People call it a box. It's a computer case, it's a computer tower, or we just call it the box. 
We can take a look at the box. You can take a look at the front of our box, and you'll find that we have USB ports to plug in our components on the outside, like keyboard and mic. You got a headphone for a speaker out. You got a microphone in port. And you've got this optical drive for those people who still use CDs, which you never know. Now, besides the front of the box, we can take a look at the back of the box. On the back of our box here, we can see a variety of different items. We've got the power supply to plug in the computer case and power everything going on. We've got these adapter cards here that give us extra functionality. One here is for networking and internet. The other one's for display to give us multiple monitors. And besides all that, down below we've got these connectors here that hook to the system board. I've got some for the microphone. I got something for a speaker, for external line in to put those high powered audio and send it into the computer system. I've got multiple display ports here regarding VGA, DVI, some cool ways to output to, again, monitors. Now these things aren't as powerful as this graphics card here. That graphics card there, well, that would be something like this. Something big and beefy to play your games, to do things such as virtual reality and 3D, you name it. That's where that goes. Now, these graphic card ports here, yeah, it's built into the motherboard, not as powerful. Down below, I've got four USB ports to connect more external devices and components, and I also got a built-in networking jack. Why two networking jacks? Because one might be built into the system board, and another one might be awesome for gaming and high performance. Let's take a look at the inside of this case and see what else we have going on here. Let's get inside the box. So we'll take off this side panel here and we'll get into the internals of our computer system. So we take a look at the inside of this computer system. One of the first things we see is this fan here. And this fan is sitting on top of these fins. And these fins have one job, to keep the CPU underneath cool. That CPU is going to be executing instructions and running programs. And that CPU is going to get really hot really fast. That heat's going to go to these fins, and this fan here is going to cool down those fins. Now, what's that CPU doing? Well, as our computer system takes an input, it's going to be taking an information. That information is going to be processed through that CPU, and it's going to be stored in things like this hard drive here, or right here on these memory sticks. So these memory sticks, they're called our RAM. And these RAM sticks here are gonna temporarily store data so it can be executed faster by our CPU. When we store data permanently, it'll be put on this hard drive over here, which is a solid state drive. An example of that would be my solid state drive right here. These solid state drives are gonna retain data and be able to read and write data very fast. Now besides that, we have some expansion cards here, and these are gonna be our graphics card and that network card we saw earlier. These are in expansion slots, which give us more functionality. It adds more to our system board. Where's the system board? Well, that system board is this entire motherboard down below, which is attached into our computer case. This motherboard is full of different components and capacitors and circuitry. It allows our entire computer system to be able to be sending and receiving data. At the top here, I've got an optical drive. That optical drive uses those old style CD, DVD discs. Yep, that can temporarily store data on a CD or DVD. Up here, this is our power supply. This is providing power down to all the components within the system, including the main board itself, that system board. This power supply will attach to your wall outlet and give you the power needed to run all of your components inside. Whether you have a small graphics card or you're dropping in the latest and greatest beefy ones in order to run anything you want to throw at your system, including gaming, homework assignments, as well as business and productivity. So get started in identifying what is inside of your computer and become an IT professional. Follow electrical safety guidelines to prevent electrical 1.1.2 electrical and ESD safety.
Complete 1.1.2.1 Electrical Safety 1.1.2.1 Electrical Safety Follow electrical safety guidelines to prevent electrical fires, injuries, and fatalities. Some printer parts, such as power supplies, contain high voltage. Check the printer manual for the location of high voltage components. Some components retain a high voltage even after the printer is turned off. Electrical devices have certain power requirements. For example, AC adapters are manufactured for specific laptops. Exchanging AC adapters with a different type of laptop or device may cause damage to both the AC adapter and the laptop. Electric equipment must be grounded. If a fault causes metal parts of the equipment to become live with electrical current, the ground will provide a path of least resistance for the current to flow harmlessly away. Typically computer product connect to ground via the power plug. Large equipment such as server racks that house network devices must also be grounded. Incomplete 1.1.2.2 ESD 1.1.2.2 ESD Electrostatic discharge ESD can occur when there is a buildup of an electric charge, static electricity, that exists on a surface which comes into contact with another, differently charged surface. ESD can cause damage to computer equipment if not discharged properly. Follow proper handling guidelines, be aware of environmental issues, and use equipment that stabilizes power to prevent equipment damage and data loss. At least 3,000 volts of static electricity must build up before a person can feel ESD. For example, static electricity can build up on you as you walk across a carpeted floor. When you touch another person, you both receive a shock. If the discharge causes pain or makes a noise, the charge was probably above 10,000 volts. By comparison, less than 30 volts of static electricity can damage a computer component. Static buildup can be discharged by touching a grounded object prior to touching any electronic equipment. This is known as self-grounding. ESD can cause permanent damage to electrical components. Follow these recommendations to help prevent ESD damage. Keep all components in anti-static bags until you are ready to install them. Use grounded mats on workbenches. Use grounded floor mats in work areas. Use anti-static wrist straps when working inside computers. Incomplete 1.1.2.3 Check your understanding ESD characteristics. 1.1.2.3 Check your understanding ESD characteristics. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answers select the submit button. Match the term to the respective characteristic. This should be attached to you when working inside computers. It takes this many volts for a person to feel an electrostatic discharge. Discharge It takes this many volts to damage a computer component. This is a buildup of an electric charge that exists on a surface which comes into contact with another different charged surface. Anti-static Anti wrist strap 3000 volts 30 volts Static electricity Submit Show feedback Previous Previous 1.2 PC Components Scroll to begin
Incomplete 1.2.1 case in power supplies. Incomplete 1.2.1.1 cases. 1.2.1.1 cases. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. The case of a desktop computer houses the internal components such as the power supply, motherboard, central processing unit, CPU, memory, disk drives, and assorted adapter cards. Cases are typically made of plastic, steel, or aluminum and provide the framework to support, protect, and cool the internal components. A device form factor refers to its physical design and look. Desktop computers are available in a variety of form factors including Horizontal case Full-size tower Compact tower All-in-one This list is not exhaustive, as many case manufacturers have their own naming conventions. These may include super tower, full tower, mid tower, mini tower, cube case, and more. Computer components tend to generate a lot of heat, therefore, computer cases contain fans that move air through the case. As the air passes warm components, it absorbs heat and then exits the case. This process keeps the computer components from overheating. Cases are also designed to protect against static electricity damage. The computer's internal components are grounded via attachment to the case. Note, computer cases are also referred to as the computer chassis, cabinet, tower, housing, or simply box. Select the arrows below for more information about different types of computer cases. Horizontal case This computer case is horizontally oriented on the user's desk with the monitor often positioned on top and was popular with early computer systems. This form factor is often used for home theater PCs, HTPCs. Full-size tower This vertically oriented case is typically located on the floor under, or beside, a desk or table. It provides room for expansion to accommodate additional components such as disk drives, adapter cards, and more. Compact tower this is a smaller version of the full-size tower and is commonly found in the corporate environment. It may also be called a mini tower or small form factor, SFF, model. It can be located on the user's desk or on the floor. It provides limited room for expansion. All-in-one All of the computer system components are integrated into the display. They often include touchscreen input and built-in microphone and speakers. Depending on the model, all-in-one computers offer little to no expansion capabilities. The power supply is often external to the computer. Incomplete 1.2.1.2 Power Supplies 1.2.1.2 Power Supplies Electricity from wall outlets is provided in alternating current AC. However, all components inside a computer require direct current DC, power. To obtain obtain DC power, computers use a power supply, as shown here, to convert AC power into a lower voltage DC power. The following describes the various computer desktop power supply form factors that have evolved over time. Advanced Technology, AT, this is the original power supply for legacy computer systems now considered obsolete. AT Extended, ATX, this is the updated version of the AT but still considered to be obsolete. ATX12V, this is the most common power supply on the market today. It includes a second motherboard connector to provide dedicated power to the CPU. There are several versions of ATX12V available. EPS12V, this was originally designed for network servers but is now commonly used in high-end desktop models. Incomplete 1.2.1.3 connectors 1.2.1.3 connectors Slideshow Select the next button to progress.
Select the arrows below for more information about different connectors. Connectors A power supply includes several different connectors, as shown here. These connectors are used to power various internal components such as the motherboard and disk drives. The connectors are keyed which means that they are designed to be inserted in only one orientation. A 20-pin or 24-pin slotted connector Connects to the motherboard the 24-pin connector has two rows of 12 pins each the 20-pin connector has two rows of 10 pins each. Incomplete 1.2.1.4 Power Supply Voltage 1.2.1.4 Power Supply Voltage Connects Disk Drives Connector SATA Keyed Connector Connects Disk Drives Connector is wider and thinner than a Molex connector. Molex Keyed Connector Connects hard drives, optical drives, or other devices. Bird keyed connector. Connect to legacy floppy drive smaller than a Molex connector. 4 pin to 8 pin auxiliary power connector. Connector has two rows of 2 to 4 pins and supplies power to different areas of the motherboard. The auxiliary power connector is the same shape as the main power connector but smaller. 6 8 pin PCIe power connector. Connector has two rows of 3 to 4 pins and supplies power to internal components. Complete 1.2.1.4 power supply voltage. 1.2.1.4 power supply voltage. The different connectors also provide different voltages. The most common voltages supplied are 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts. The 3.3 volt and 5 volt supplies are typically used by digital circuits, while the 12 volt supply is used to run motors in disk drives and fans. Power supplies can also be single rail, dual rail, or multi rail. A rail is the printed circuit board, PCB, inside the power supply to which the external cables are connected. Connected. A single rail has all of the connectors connected to the same PCB, while a multi rail PCB has separate PCBs for each connector. A computer can tolerate slight fluctuations in power, but a significant deviation can cause the power supply to fail. Incomplete 1.2.1.5 Check your understanding, cases, and power supplies. 1. Course home. Point 2.1.5 Check your understanding, cases, and power supplies. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answers select the submit button. Match PC cases and power supplies component to the description. 6 8 pin PCIe power connector. At at
ATX 12V EPS 12V Molex This was originally designed for network servers, but is now commonly used in high-end desktop models. This is the only choice that does not allow for plus 3.3V. This connects hard drives, optical drives, or other devices. This is the most common power supply on the market today, a T includes a second motherboard connector to provide dedicated power to the CPU. This connector has two rows of three to four pins and supplies power to internal components. Reset. Show feedback. Incomplete 1.2.2 motherboards. Complete 1.2.2.1 motherboards. 1.2.2.1 motherboards. The motherboard, also known as the system board or the main board, is the backbone of the computer. As shown in the figure, a motherboard is a printed circuit board, PCB, that contains buses, or electrical pathways, that interconnect electronic components. These components may be soldered directly to the motherboard, or added using sockets, expansion slots, and ports. Incomplete 1.2.2.2 Motherboard Components 1.2.2.2 Motherboard Components These are some connections on the motherboard where computer components can be added, as shown in the figure of a motherboard below. The connections labeled in the figure are the following. Central Processing Unit, CPU, this is is considered the brain of the computer. Random access memory, RAM, this is a temporary location to store data and applications. Expansion slots, these provide locations to connect additional components. Chipset, this consists of the integrated circuits on the motherboard that control how system hardware interacts with the CPU and motherboard. It also establishes how much memory can be added to a motherboard and the type of connectors on the motherboard. Basic Input-Output System, BIOS, Chip and Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, UEFI, Chip BIOS is used to help boot the computer and manage the flow of data between the hard drive, video card, keyboard, mouse, and more. In modern computers BIOS has been replaced by UEFI. UEFI specifies a different firmware for boot and runtime services. Firmware is programming that allows a computer operating system to control the hardware. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows below for more information on some additional IT essentials. Internet connection, getting online, module 1 introduction to personal computer hardware. Select the arrows below for more information on some additional important connectors. SATA SATA, or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, ATA, is a disk drive interface used for connecting optical drives, hard drives, and solid-state drives to the motherboard. SATA supports hot swapping, which is the ability to replace devices without powering off the computer. IDE Integrated Drive Electronics, IDE, is an older standard interface for connecting disk drives to the motherboard. IDE uses a 40-pin connector. Each IDE interface supports a maximum of two devices. Internal USB A 19-pin connector is used to connect the external USB 3 ports on the computer case to the motherboard. USB 1.1 and USB 2 connectors have 9 pins. Complete 1.2.2.3 Motherboard Chipset 1.2.2.3 Motherboard Chipset The figure illustrates how a motherboard connects various components. Most chipsets consist of the following two types. Northbridge controls high-speed access to the RAM and video card. It also controls the speed at which the CPU communicates with all of the other components in the computer. Video capability is sometimes integrated into the Northbridge. 
Southbridge allows the CPU to communicate with slower speed devices including hard drives, universal serial bus, USB, ports, and expansion slots. Incomplete 1.2.2.4 Motherboard Form Factors Complete 1.2.1.2 Power Supplies 1.2.1.2 Power Supplies One dot two dot two dot four motherboard form factors. The form factor of motherboards pertains to the size and shape of the board. It also describes the physical layout of the different components and devices on the motherboard. There have been many variations of motherboards developed over the years. There are three common motherboard form factors. Advanced Technology Extended ATX. This is the most common motherboard form factor. The ATX case accommodates the integrated I.O. ports on the standard ATX motherboard. The ATX power supply connects to the motherboard via a single 20-pin connector. Micro ATX This is a smaller form factor that is designed to be backward compatible with ATX. Micro ATX boards often use the same Northbridge and Southbridge chipsets and power connectors as full-size ATX boards and therefore can use many of the same components. Generally, Micro ATX boards can fit in standard ATX cases. However, Micro ATX motherboards are much smaller than ATX motherboards and have fewer expansion slots. ITX, the ITX form factor has gained in popularity because of its very small size. There are many types of ITX motherboards, however, Mini-ITX is one of the most popular. The Mini-ITX form factor uses very little power, so fans are not needed to keep it cool. A Mini-ITX motherboard has only one PCI slot for expansion cards. A computer based on a Mini-ITX form factor can be used in places where it is inconvenient to have a large or noisy computer. The table highlights these and other form factor variations. 
Note, it is important to distinguish between form factors. The choice of motherboard form factor determines how individual components attach to it, the type of power supply required, and the shape of the computer case. Some manufacturers also have proprietary form factors based on the ATX design. This causes some motherboards, power supplies, and other components to be incompatible with standard ATX cases. Complete 1.2.2.4 Table 0 Form Factor Description ATX Advanced Technology Extended Most Popular Form Factor 12 in x 9.6 in 30.5 cm x 24.4 cm Micro ATX Smaller footprint than the ATX Popular in desktop and small form factor computers 9.6 in x 9.6 in 24.4 cm x 24.4 cm Mini ITX Designed for small devices such as thin clients and set-top boxes 6.7 inches x 6.7 in 17 cm x 17 cm ITX Comparable form factor to micro ATX 8.5 in x 7.5 in 21.5 cm x 19.1 cm Incomplete 1.2.2.5 Check your understanding, motherboards. 1.2.2.5 Check your understanding, motherboards. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match the motherboard type and component to the description. Southbridge CPU Mini ITX BIOS chip Expansion slot Northbridge RAM Micro ITX Has only one PCI slot for expansion cards Allows the CPU to communicate with slower speed devices a temporary location to store data and applications. Smaller form factor that is backward compatible with ATX. E and component to the description. Southbridge. CPU. 
Mini ITX. BIOS chip. Expansion slot. Northbridge. RAM. Micro ITX. Has only one PCI slot for expansion cards. Allows the CPU to communicate with slower speed devices. A temporary location to store data and applications. Provides locations for connecting additional components to the motherboard. Controls high-speed access to RAM and the video card. Smaller form factor that is backward compatible with ATX. Considered the brain of the computer. Used to boot the computer and perform a power-on self-test. Reset. Show feedback. Incomplete 1.2.3 CPUs and cooling systems. Incomplete 1.2.3.1 What is a CPU? 1.2.3.1 What is a CPU? The central processing unit, CPU, is responsible for interpreting and executing commands. It handles instructions from the computer's other hardware, such as a keyboard and software. The CPU interprets the instructions and outputs the information to the monitor or performs the requested tasks. The CPU is a small microchip that resides within a CPU package. The CPU package is often referred to as the CPU. CPU packages come in different form factors, each style requiring a particular socket on the motherboard. Common CPU manufacturers include Intel and AMD. The CPU socket is the connection between the motherboard and the processor. Modern CPU sockets and processor packages are built around the following architectures. Pin Grid Array, PGA. In PGA architecture, shown below, the pins are on the underside of the processor package and is inserted into the motherboard CPU socket using zero insertion force, ZIF. ZIF refers to the amount of force needed to install a CPU into the motherboard socket or slot. Land Grid Array, LGA in an LGA architecture, shown below, the pins are in the socket instead of on the processor. Incomplete 1.2.3.2 Cooling Systems 1.2.3.2 Cooling Systems The flow of current between electronic components generates heat. Computer components perform better when kept cool. If the heat is not removed, the computer may run more slowly. If too much heat builds up, the computer could crash or components can be damaged. Therefore, it is imperative that computers be kept cool. Computers are kept cool using active and passive cooling solutions. Active solutions require power while passive solutions do not. Passive solutions for cooling usually involve reducing the speed at which a component is operating or adding heat sinks to computer chips. A case fan is considered as active cooling. The figure shows examples of passive and active cooling solutions. Heat sink, passive cooling. Heat sink, passive cooling. Case fan, active cooling. Incomplete 1.2.3.3 Check your understanding, CPUs and cooling systems. Incomplete question 1. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. True or false. In LGA architecture, the pins are on the underside of the processor which is inserted into the motherboard CPU socket using ZIF. False. Submit. Submit. 
False. Submit. Show feedback. In Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete one point. Incomplete question two. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. What is an example of passive cooling for CPU? Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete 1.2.4. One point two point four memory. Complete one dot two dot four dot one types of memory. One dot two dot four dot one types of memory. A computer might use different types of memory chips, as shown in the figure. However, all memory chips store data in the form of bytes. A byte is a grouping of digital information and represents information such as letters, numbers, and symbols. Specifically, a byte is a block of 8 bits stored as either 0 or 1 in the memory chip. Read-only memory An essential computer chip is the read-only memory, ROM, chip. ROM chips are located on the motherboard and other circuit boards and contain instructions that can be directly accessed by a CPU. The instructions stored in ROM include basic operation instructions such as booting the computer and loading the operating system. ROM is non-volatile which means that the contents are not erased when the computer is powered off. Random Access Memory RAM is the temporary working storage for data and programs that are being accessed by the CPU. Unlike ROM, RAM is volatile memory, which means that the contents are erased every time the computer is powered off. Adding more RAM in a computer enhances the system performance. For instance, more RAM increases the memory capacity of the computer to hold and process programs and files. With less RAM, a computer must swap data between RAM and the much slower hard drive. The maximum amount of RAM that can be installed is limited by the motherboard. Incomplete 1.2.4.2 types of RAM 1.2.4.2 types of RAM Slideshow Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows to learn more about different types of ROM. ROM Read-only memory chips Information is written to a ROM chip when it is manufactured. A ROM chip that cannot be erased or rewritten is now obsolete. The term ROM still tends to be used generically for any read-only memory chip type. PROM Information on a programmable read-only memory chip is written after it is manufactured. PROMs are manufactured blank and then can be programmed by a PROM programmer when needed. Generally, these chips cannot be erased and can only be programmed once. EPROM Erasable programmable read-only memory is non-volatile but can be erased by exposing it to strong ultraviolet light. EPROMs usually have a transparent quartz window on the top of the chip. Constant erasing and reprogramming could ultimately render the chip useless. EPROM 
Information is written to an electrically erasable programmable read-only memory chip after it is manufactured and without removing it from the device. EEPROM chips are also called flash ROMs since its contents can be flashed for deletion. EEPROMs are often used to store a computer system's BIOS. Incomplete 1.2.4.3 Types of RAM 1.2.4.3 Types of RAM List of expandable sections Select each button to expand the content. Select each type of RAM to learn more information. Dynamic RAM Older technology, popular until the mid-1990s. Used for main memory. DROM gradually discharges energy so it must be constantly refreshed with pulses of electricity in order to maintain the stored data in the chip. Static RAM Requires constant power to function. Often used for cache memory. Uses lower power consumption. Much faster than DROM. More expensive than DROM. SDRAM. DROM that operates in synchronization with the memory bus. Able to process overlapping instructions in parallel, e.g. It can process a read before a write has been completed. Higher transfer rates. Double data rate synchronous dynamic RAM. DDR SDRAM transfers data twice as fast as SDRAM. Able to support two writes and two reads per CPU clock cycle. Connector has 184 pins and a single notch. Uses lower standard voltage, 2.5 feet. Family, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. DDR2 Synchronous Dynamic RAM DDR2 SDRAM also transfers data twice as fast as SDRAM. Runs at higher clock speeds than DDR, 553 MHz versus DDR at 200 MHz. Improves performance by decreasing noise and crosstalk between signal wires. Connector has 240 pins. Uses lower standard voltage, 1.8V. DDR3 Synchronous Dynamic RAM DDR4 Synchronous Dynamic RAM Generates less heat. DDR3 SDRAM expands memory bandwidth by doubling the clock rate of DDR2. Consumes less power than DDR2, 1.5 feet. Generates less heat. Runs at higher clock speeds, up to 800 MHz. Connector has 240 pins. DDR4 Synchronous Dynamic RAM. DDR4 SDRAM quadruples DDR3 maximum storage capacity. Consumes less power than DDR3, 1.2 V. Runs at higher clock speeds, up to 1,600 MHz. Connector has 288 pins. Available with advanced error correction features such as error correcting code memory, ECC memory, to detect multiple bit errors. GDDR Synchronous Dynamic RAM The G stands for graphics. RAM specifically designed for video graphics. Used in conjunction with a dedicated GPU. Family, GDDR, GDDR2, GDDR3, GDDR4, GDDR5. Each family member improves performance. Each family member lowers power consumption. GDDR SDRAM processes massive amounts of data but not necessarily at the fastest speeds. 
DDR5. More than double the speed of the fastest DDR4 modules. DDR5 quadruples DDR4 maximum storage capacity. Slightly lower power consumption than DDR4 1.1V. Connector has 288 pins but a different pattern than DDR4, so they are not compatible. Maximum module size is 128 GB. Incomplete 1.2.4.4 memory modules. 1.2.4.4 memory modules. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Early computers had RAM installed on the motherboard as individual chips. The individual memory chips, called dual inline package, DIP, chips, were difficult to install and often became loose. To solve this problem, designers soldered the memory chips to a circuit board to create a memory module which would then be placed into a memory slot on the motherboard. Select the arrows to learn more about different types of memory modules. DIP Dual inline package is an individual memory chip. A DIP has dual rows of pins used to attach it to the motherboard. SIM Single inline memory module is a small circuit board that holds several memory chips. SIMs have 30 pin or 72 pin configurations. DIM memory Dual inline memory module is a circuit board that holds SD RAM, DDR SD RAM, DDR2 SD RAM, DDR3 SD RAM, and DDR4 SD RAM chips. There are 168 pin SD RAM DIMMs, 184 pin DDR DIMMs, 240 pin DDR2 and DDR3 DIMMs, and 288 pin DDR4 DIMMs. Incomplete single-sided, double-sided, and multi-channel. SODM Small outline DMM has a 72-pin and 100-pin configurations for support of 32-bit transfers or a 144-pin, 200-pin, 204-pin, and 260-pin configurations for support of 64-bit transfers. This smaller, more condensed version of DIMM provides random access data storage that is ideal for use in laptops, printers, and other devices where conserving space is desirable. Incomplete single-sided, double-sided, and multi-channel. Memory modules can be single-sided or double-sided. Single-sided memory modules contain RAM on only one side of the module. Double-sided memory modules contain RAM on both sides. The speed of memory has a direct impact on how much data a processor can process in a given period of time. As processor speed increases, memory speed must also increase. Memory throughput has also been increased through multi-channel technology. Standard RAM is single-channel, meaning that all of the RAM slots are addressed at the same time. Dual-channel RAM adds a second channel to be able to access a second module at the same time. Triple-channel technology provides another channel so that three modules can be accessed at the same time. Quadruple channel adds another channel to the memory controller for even higher bandwidth. To use triple and quadruple channel memory controllers for the most bandwidth, the chipset architecture must support it and will only be able to use as many channels that have memory slots populated. In many cases, memory slots can only be populated in a certain order in order to ensure all memory channels are used. Incomplete cache memory. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. The fastest memory is typically static RAM, 
SRAM, which is cache memory for storing the most recently used data and instructions by the CPU. SRAM provides the processor with faster access to the data than retrieving it from the slower dynamic RAM, DROM, or main memory. Select each type of cache memory to learn more. L1 L1 cache Cache is internal cache and is integrated into the CPU. A CPU can have various models each with a different amount of L1 cache. L2 L2 cache is external cache and was originally mounted on the motherboard near the CPU. L2 cache is now integrated into the CPU. L3 L3 cache is used on some high-end workstations and server CPUs. L1 L2 L3 Incomplete memory errors A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Memory errors occur when the data is not stored correctly in the chips. The computer uses different methods to detect and correct data errors in memory. Select each type of error checking method to learn more. Non-parity Non-parity memory does not check for errors in memory. Non-parity RAM is the most common RAM used for home and business workstations. Parity Parity memory contains 8 bits for data and 1 bit for error checking. The error checking bit is called a parity bit. ECC Error correction code memory can detect multiple bit errors in memory and correct single bit errors in memory. On servers used for financial or data analytics, ECC memory modules may be required. Non-parity Parity ECC Incomplete 1.2.4.5 Check your understanding, memory 1.2.4.5 Check your understanding, memory Incomplete question 1 This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. Which statement describes APRAM? Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete question 2. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. A user complains that the computer is running very slowly. What solution would help speed it up? Reset. Show feedback. Incomplete question 3. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. Which RAM in the group provides the fastest performance?
Performance. Reset. Show feedback. Income. Fall. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. True or false. Error correction code memory can correct multiple bit errors. Incomplete question 5. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. Which
Submit. Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete 1.2.5 adapter cards and expansion slots. Incomplete 1.2.5.1 adapter cards. 1.2.5.1 adapter cards. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Adapter cards increase the functionality of a computer by adding controllers for specific devices or by replacing malfunctioning ports. There are a variety of adapter cards available that are used to expand and customize the capability of a computer. Select each type of adapter card for a picture and brief explanation. Sound adapter Sound adapters provide audio capability. Network interface card, NIC. A NIC connects a computer to a network using a network cable. eSATA card. Adds additional internal and external SATA ports to a computer through a single PCI Express slot. Sound adapter. Network interface card, NIC eSATA card, video adapter, incomplete other adapter cards, video adapter, video adapters provide video capability, sound adapter, the adapter cards, the following are some other adapter cards. Wireless NIC, a wireless NIC connects a computer to a network using radio frequencies. Capture card, capture cards send a video signal to a computer so that the signal can be recorded to a storage drive with video capture software. TV tuner card, these provide the ability to watch and record television signals on a PC by connecting a cable television, satellite, or antenna to the installed tuner card. Universal serial bus, USB, controller card, provides additional USB ports to connect the computer to peripheral devices. It should be noted that some of these adapter cards can be integrated on the motherboard. Note, older computers may also have a modem adapter, accelerated graphics port, AGP, a small computer system interface, SCSI, adapter, and more. Incomplete expansion slots. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Computers have expansion slots on the motherboard to install adapter cards. The type of adapter card connector must match the expansion slot. Select the arrows to learn more about each type of expansion slot. PCI Peripheral Component Interconnect is a 32-bit or 64-bit expansion slot. It is currently found in few computers. PCI expansion slots have become mostly obsolete. Mini PCI this is smaller version of PCI found in some laptops. Mini PCI has three different form factors, type 1, type 2, and type 3. PCIX PCI Extended is an updated version of the standard PCI. It uses a 32-bit bus with higher bandwidth than the PCI bus. PCIX can operate up to four times faster than PCI. PCIX expansion slots have become mostly obsolete. PCA PCI Express is a 64-bit parallel interface that is backward compatible with 32-bit PCI devices. 
PCIe is a serial point-to-point -point connection with a different physical interface that was designed to supersede both PCI and PCIX. There are four sizes, lengths PCI Express X1, PCI Express X4, PCI Express X8, and PCI Express X16, PCIe X4, connections have four data lanes. PCIe X8 connections have eight data lanes. PCIe X16 connections have 16 data lanes. Incomplete new component title. Version. A riser card can be added to a computer to provide additional expansion slots for more expansion cards. Riser card. AGP. Accelerated Graphics Port, AGP, was a high-speed slot for attaching an AGP video card. The AGP has been superseded by PCI. Few motherboards still use this technology today. Complete new component title. Version. GB slash S for X1. GB slash S for X8. 2. Point five eight three point nine eight five eight four one point nine six nine thirty one point five zero eight five three point nine three eight sixty three point zero one five Note GB slash S is gigabytes per second. Every version of PCIe is backward compatible with all other versions. For example, if you have a motherboard that supports version 4, you can still use version 3 PCIe components. The speed of the bus will be determined by the lowest version component installed. PCIe can supply up to 25 watts of power to each slot. For a graphics card, it can supply up to 75 watts. For very powerful graphics cards, an additional 75 watts can be supplied by a PCIe power connector from the power supply. Incomplete 1.2.5.2 Check your understanding, adapter cards, and expansion slots. 1.2.5.2 Check your understanding, adapter cards, and expansion slots. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match the adapter card and expansion slot to the description. Capture card. PCA. Riser. Mini PCI. This adapter sends a video signal to a computer so that the signal can be recorded. This is a card that adds additional expansion slots to a computer. This expansion slot has X1, X4, X8, and X16 slots. This laptop expansion slot has Type 1, Type 2, and Type 3 form factors. Incomplete 1.2.6 hard disk drives and SSDs. Complete 1.2.6.1 types of storage devices. 1.2.6.1 types of storage devices. A number of different types of devices are available for data storage on a PC, as shown in the figure. Data drives provide non-volatile storage of data, meaning that when the drive loses power, the data is retained and available the next time the drive is powered on. On. Some drives have fixed media, and other drives have removable media. Some offer the ability to read and write data, while others only allow data to be accessed, but not written. 
Data storage devices can be classified according to the media on which the data is stored, magnetic like HDD and tape drives, solid state, or optical. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Select each type of drive for a picture. Hard disk drive. Hard disk drive. Solid state drive. Optical drive. Tape drive. Incomplete 1.2.6.2 storage device interfaces. 1.2.6.2 storage device interfaces. Internal storage devices often connect to the motherboard using serial and attachment SATA connections. The SATA standards define the way that data is transferred, the transfer rates, and physical characteristics of the cables and connectors. There are three main versions of the SATA standard, SATA 1, SATA 2, and SATA 3, as shown in the figure. The cables and connectors are the same, but the data transfer speeds are different. SATA 1 allows for a maximum data transfer rate of 1.5 gigabits per second, while SATA 2 can reach up to 3 gigabits per second. SATA 3 is the fastest with speeds up to 6 gigabits per second. Note, legacy internal drive connection methods include the parallel ATA standards known as Integrated Drive Electronics, IDE, and Enhanced Integrated Drive Electronics, EID. Small Computer System Interface, SCSI, is another interface between motherboards and data storage devices. It is an older standard that originally used parallel, rather than serial, data transfers. A new version of SCSI known as Serially Attached SCSI, SAS, has been developed. SAS is a popular interface used for server storage. Complete 1.2.6.2 Table 0 ATA Parallel Pata ID 8.3 megabits per second. I 16.6 megabits per second. Serial SATA SATA 1 1.5 gigabits per second. SATA 2 3.0 gigabits per second. SATA 3 6.0 gigabits per second. Incomplete 1.2.6.3 Magnetic Media Storage 1.2.6.3 Magnetic Media Storage Hard Disk Drive, HDD HDDs are the traditional magnetic disk devices that have been used for years. Their storage capacity ranges from gigabytes, GBs, to terabytes, TBs. Their speed is measured in revolutions per minute, RPM. This indicates how fast the spindle turns the platters that hold the data. The faster the spindle speed, the faster a hard drive can find data on the platters. This can correspond to faster transfer speeds. Common hard drive spindle speeds include 5400, 7200, 10,000, and 15,000 RPM. HDDs come in 1.8, 2.5, and 3.5 inch form factors, as shown in Figure 1. The 3.5 inch form factor is standard for personal computers. 2.5 inch HDDs are typically used in mobile devices. 1.8-inch HDDs were used in portable media players and other mobile applications, but are seldom used in new devices. Devices Hard Disk Drive, HDD Tape Drive 
Incomplete 1.2.6.4 Semiconductor Store. Eighth Drive. Magnetic tapes are most often used for archiving data. At one time they were useful for backing up PCs, however as HDDs became cheaper, external HDD drives are now frequently used for this purpose. However, tape backups are still used in enterprise networks. Tape drives use a magnetic read slash write head and removable tape cartridge, as shown in Figure 2. Although data retrieval using a tape drive can be fast, locating specific data is slow because the tape must be wound on a reel until the data is found. Common tape storage capacities vary between a few GBs to many TBs. Hard Disk Drive, HDD Tape Drive Complete 1.2.6.4 Semiconductor Storage 1.2.6.4 Semiconductor Storage Solid State Drives, SSD, store data as electrical charges in semiconductor flash memory. This makes SSDs much faster than magnetic HDDs. SSD storage capacity ranges from around 120 GBs to many TBs. SSDs have no moving parts, make no noise, are more energy efficient, and produce less heat than HDDs. Because SSDs have no moving parts to fail, they are considered to be more reliable than HDDs. SSDs come in three form factors. Disk drive form factor, these are similar to an HDD in which the semiconductor memory is in a closed package that can be mounted in computer cases like an HDD. They can be 2.5, 3.5, and 1.8 inches, although those are rare. Expansion cards, this plugs directly into the motherboard and mounts in the computer case like other expansion cards. MSATA or M.2 modules, these packages may use a special socket. M.2 is a standard for computer expansion cards. It is a family of standards that specify physical aspects of expansion cards such as connectors and dimension. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Select each SSD form factor for a picture. SSD 2.5 inch drive. SSD M.2 drive. SSD 2.5 inch drive. SSD M.2 drive. SSD adapter card. The following figure shows the 2.5 inch and M.2 form factors in comparison to a 3.5 inch magnetic HDD. The non-volatile memory express, NVMe, specification was developed specifically to allow computers to take greater advantage of the features of SSDs by providing a standard interface between SSDs, the PCIe bus, and operating systems. NVMe allows compliant SSD drives to attach to the PCIe bus without requiring special drivers, in much the same way that USB flash drives can be used in multiple computers without requiring installation on each. Finally, solid-state hybrid drives, SSHDs, are a compromise between a magnetic HDD and an SSD. They are faster than an HDD but less expensive than an SSD. They combine a magnetic HDD with onboard flash memory serving as a non-volatile cache. The SSHD drive automatically caches data that is frequently accessed, which can speed up certain operations such as operating system startup. Incomplete 1.2.6.5 Check your understanding, data storage devices. 
1.2.6.5 Check your understanding. Data storage to Devices. Matching. Select from lists and then submit. Match the data storage device to the storage type category. DVD. Please select an option. Optical. Tape drive. 2.5 inch flash drive. Please. Optical uses laser light to record or erase data. Data. Incomplete one. 1.2.7 Optical Storage Devices Complete 1.2.7.1 Types of Optical Storage Devices 1.2.7.1 Types of Optical Storage Devices Optical drives are a type of removable media storage device that use lasers to read and write data on optical media. They were developed to overcome the storage capacity limitations of removable magnetic media such as floppy disks and magnetic storage cartridges. The figure shows an internal optical drive. Incomplete types of optical media There are three types of optical drives. Compact disc, CD, audio, and data. Digital versatile disc, DVD, digital video, and data. Blu-ray disc, BD, HD digital video, and data. CD, DVD, and BD media can be pre-recorded, read-only, recordable, write once, or re-recordable, read and write multiple times. DVD and BD media can also be single-layer, SL, or dual-layer, DL. Dual-layer media roughly doubles the capacity of a single disk. The table describes the various types of optical media and their approximate storage capacities. Optical media Description Description Storage capacity CD-ROM CD-read-only memory media that is pre-recorded 700 megabytes. CDR. CD recordable media that can be recorded one time. CD. CDRW. CD rewritable media that can be recorded, erased, and re recorded. DVD ROM. DVD read only memory media that is pre recorded. 4.7 gigabytes. Single layer. 8.5 gigabytes, dual layer. DVD RAM. DVD rewritable media that can be recorded, erased, and re recorded. DVD plus forward slash R. DVD recordable media that can be recorded one time. DVD plus forward slash RW. DVD rewritable media that can be recorded, erased, and re recorded. BD ROM. Blu ray read only media that is pre recorded with movies, games, or software. 
25 gigabytes, single layer. 50 gigabytes, dual layer. BDR. Blu-ray recordable media that can be recorded one time. BDRE. Blu-ray rewritable media that can be recorded, erased, and re-recorded. Incomplete 1.2.7.2 Check your understanding, types of optical media. 1.2.7.2 Check your understanding, types of optical media. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match the optical media format to the description. R plus forward slash R RW ROM plus forward slash RW RE R 4 DVD disc, write many. For Blu-ray disc, write once. For Blu-ray disc, write many. For DVD disc, write once. For compact disc, write many. For compact disc, write once. For all optical media type, pre-recorded audio, software, or data.
Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete 1.2.8 ports, cables, and adapters. Incomplete 1.2.8.1 video ports and cables. 1.2.8.1 video ports and cables. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of different types of video ports and cables. Video ports and cables. A video port connects a monitor cable to a computer. Video ports and monitor cables transfer analog signals, digital signals, or both. Computers are digital devices that create digital signals. The digital signals are sent to the graphics card where they are transmitted through a cable to a display. DVI, Digital Visual Interface The DVI connector is usually white and consists of as many as 24 pins, 3 rows of 8 pins, for digital signals, up to 4 pins for analog signals, and a flat pin called a ground bar. Display Port DisplayPort is an interface technology that is designed to connect high-end graphics-capable PCs and displays, as well as home theater equipment and displays. Incomplete more about DVI. HDMI was developed specifically for high-definition televisions. However, its digital features also make it a good candidate for computers. Computers. Complete more about DVI. DVI. There are five types of DVI that are available for digital and analog output and also for... C Select the arrows for a picture and description of different types of video ports and cables. High Definition Multimedia Interface HDMI HDMI was developed specifically for high-definition televisions. However, its digital features also make it a good candidate for computers. Thunderbolt 1 or 2 Thunderbolt allows for high-speed connection of peripherals such as hard drives, RAID arrays, network interfaces, and it can transmit high-definition video using the DisplayPort protocol. Thunderbolt 3 Thunderbolt 3 uses the same connector as USB-C. It has twice the bandwidth of Thunderbolt 2, uses less power, and can provide two 4K monitors with video. Video Graphics Array, VGA This is a connector for analog video. It has 3 rows and 15 pins. It is also sometimes referred to as the DE15 or HD15 connector. Radio Corporation of America, RCA RCA connectors have a central plug with a ring around it and are used to carry audio or video. RCA connectors are often found in groups of three, where a yellow connector carries video and a pair of red and white connectors carries left and right audio channels. Complete more about DVI. There are five types of DVI that are available for digital and analog output and also for single link and dual link which offers extra bandwidth. DVI-D only supports digital devices and outputs. DVI-A will only support analog output. DVI-I supports digital outputs and analog devices. There are currently two main types of DVI connectors, DVI-I and DVI-D. DVI-D provides a digital-only signal, while DVI-I can support digital and analog signals. DVI is disappearing as quickly as it appeared. 
It's still seen in some monitors alongside VGA, which is finally starting to fade in favor of HDMI. Incomplete 1.2.8.2 Other Ports and Cables 1.2.8.2 Other Ports and Cables Slideshow Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of other types of ports and cables. Other ports and cables. Input, output, I.O. ports on a computer connect peripheral devices such as printers, scanners, and portable drives. In addition to the ports and interfaces previously discussed, a computer may also have other ports. Personal System 2, PS-2 A PS-2 port connects a keyboard or a mouse to a computer. The PS-2 port is a 6-pin Minidan female connector. The connectors for the keyboard and mouse are often colored differently. If the ports are not color-coded, look for a small figure of a mouse or keyboard next to each port. Incomplete 1.2.8.3 Adapters and Converters Audio Ports Connect Audio and Game Port Audio Ports Connect Audio Devices to the Computer Analog ports typically include a line-in port to connect to an external source, e.g., stereo system, a microphone port, and line-out ports to connect speakers or headphones. The game port connects to a joystick or MIDI interface device. Network A network port, also known as an RJ45 or 8P8C port, has 8 pins and connects devices to a network. The connection speed depends on the type of network port. The maximum length of the Ethernet network cable is 100 meters, 328 feet. Serial Ad Attachment, SATA The SATA cable connects SATA devices to the SATA interface using a 7-pin data cable. SATA connectors have an L-shaped slot so the cable only fits in one orientation. This cable does not supply any power to the SATA device. A separate power cable provides power to the drive. Integrated Drive Electronics, IDE The IDE cable is a ribbon cable used to connect storage drives inside the computer. The two most common types of IDE ribbon cables are the 34-pin cable used for floppy drives and the 40-pin cable for hard drives and optical drives. The Universal Serial Bus, USB USB is a standard interface that connects peripheral devices to a computer. USB devices are hot-swappable, which means that users can connect and disconnect the devices while the computer is powered on. Incomplete 1.2.8.3 Adapters and Converters 1.2.8.3 Adapters and Converters Adapters and Converters There are many connection standards in use today. Many are interoperable but require specialized components. These components are called adapters and converters. Adapter, this is a component that physically connects one technology to another. For example, a DVI to HDMI adapter. The adapter could be one component or a cable with different ends. Converter, this performs the same function as an adapter but also translates the signals from one technology to the other. For example, a USB 3.0 to SATA converter enables a hard disk drive to be used as a flash drive. Select the arrows for a picture and description of types of adapters and converters. DVI to VGA adapter This adapter is used to connect a VGA cable to a DVI port. USB to Ethernet Converter 
This converter is used to convert USB to an Ethernet. USB to PS slash 2 adapter. This adapter is used to connect a USB keyboard or mouse to a PS slash 2 port. Incomplete 1.2.8.4 DVI to HDMI adapter. This adapter is used to connect an HDMI cable to a DVI port. Molex to SATA adapter. This is used to connect a SATA drive to a Molex power cable. HDMI to VGA converter. This converter is used to convert VGA signals to HDMI signals. Incomplete 1.2.8.4 Check your understanding, ports, cables, and adapters. 1.2.8.4 Check your understanding, ports, cables, and adapters. Matching. Select from lists and then submit. Match the cable or connector to the respective image. Please select an option. DVI, HDMI, SATA, Thunderbolt, USB. Please select an option. DVI, HDMI, SATA, Thunderbolt, USB. DVI. DVI, HDMI, SATA. Please select an option. Please select an option. Please select an option. Please select an option. Incomplete 1.2.8. Matching. Select from lists and then submit. Ma DVI HDMI SATA Thunderbolt USB Re Reset Show 1.2.9 Input Devices Incomplete 1.2.9.1 The Original Input Devices 1.2.9.1 The Original Input Devices Slideshow Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of input devices. The original input devices. Input devices allow the user to communicate with a computer. The images below are some of the first input devices. Keyboard and mouse. These are the two most commonly used input devices. Keyboards are typically used for creating text documents and emails. The mouse is used to navigate the graphical user interface, GUI. Laptops also have touchpads to provide built-in keyboard and mouse features. The keyboard was the very first type of input device. ADF slash flatbed scanner. These devices digitize an image or document. A photograph or document is placed on the flat glass surface and the scan head then moves under the glass. The digitization of the image is stored as a file that can be displayed, printed, emailed, or altered. Some of these scanners have automatic document feeders, ADF, to support multiple page input. Joystick and gamepad. These are input devices for playing games. 
Gamepads allow the player to control movement and views with small sticks and multiple buttons. Many gamepads also have triggers that register the amount of pressure the player puts on them. Joysticks are often used to play flight simulation style games. KVM Switch The keyboard, video, and mouse KVM Switch is a hardware device that can be used to control more than one computer while using a single keyboard, monitor, and mouse. For businesses, KVM switches provide cost-efficient access to multiple servers. Home users can save space using a KVM switch to connect multiple computers to one keyboard, monitor, and mouse. Some KVM switches have the capability to share USB devices and speakers with multiple computers. Incomplete 1.2.9.2 New Input Devices 1.2.9.2 New Input Devices Slideshow Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of newer input devices. New Input Devices some new input devices include touch screen, a stylus, a magnetic strip reader, and a barcode scanner. Touch screen. These input devices have touch or pressure sensitive screens. The computer receives instructions specific to the place on the screen that the user touches. Stylus. This device is a type of digitizer that allows a designer or artist to create blueprints, images, or other artwork by using a pen-like tool called a stylus on a surface that senses where the tip is touching it. Some digitizers have more than one surface or sensor and allow the user to create 3D models by performing actions with the stylus in midair. Air. Magnetic Stripe Reader Also called a mag stripe reader, this device reads information magnetically encoded on the back of plastic cards, such as identification badges or credit cards. Also shown at the top of the device is a chip reader. For cards with chips, the card is inserted into the device and the device reads the chip. Chip reading provides much more security of the user's data because each transaction is a unique code that cannot be used again. Barcode Scanner This type of scanner, also called a price scanner, reads the information contained in the barcodes affixed to most products. They can be handheld, wireless devices, or a stationary device. The light source on the reader captures the barcode image and translates the image into computer-readable content. This device is typically used at checkout counters in stores or for determining inventory levels. Incomplete 1.2.9.3 More New Input Devices 1.2.9.3 More New Input Devices Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of some other input devices. More new input devices. Digital camera. These input devices capture images and videos that can be stored, displayed, printed, or altered. Webcam. These devices are video cameras that can be integrated into a computer or they can be external. They are typically used for video conferencing or to stream live video onto the internet. Signature Pad This is a device that electronically captures a person's signature. A person uses a stylus to sign on the screen. Since the electronic signature is legal, it is typically used to establish receipt of deliveries or to sign agreements or contracts. Smart Card Reader These 
input devices are typically used on a computer to authenticate the user. A smart card may be the size of a credit card with an embedded integrated circuit that is typically under a gold contact pad on one side of the card. Microphone This device is a type of digitizer that allows a user to speak into a computer and have their voice digitized. Voice, music, or sounds can be stored on the computer to be played back, uploaded, or emailed. This device can also be used as input for games and communication software. One dot two dot nine dot four most recent input devices. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of each. Most recent input devices. The newest input devices include NFC devices and terminals, facial recognition scanners, fingerprint scanners, voice recognition scanners, and virtual reality headsets. NFC devices and terminals. Near field communication tap to pay devices, such as credit cards or smartphones, are able to read and write to an NFC chip. This allows the NFC-powered terminal to subtract money from the balance on the card. Two NFC-capable devices can also transfer data such as photographs, links, or contacts between them. Facial Recognition Scanners These biometric input devices identify a user based on their unique facial features. Many laptops and most smartphones have facial recognition scanners to automate logging in to the device. These devices are typically used to provide secure access to devices or locations. Fingerprint Scanners These biometric input devices identify a user based on a unique physical feature such as their fingerprints. Many laptops and smart devices have fingerprint readers to automate logging in to the device. These devices are typically used to provide secure access to devices or locations. Incomplete 1.2.9.5 Check your understanding. Input Incomplete 1.2.9 Voice These Incomplete question 1. Voice recognition scanners. These biometric input devices identify a user based on their unique voice. These devices are often used to provide secure access to locations. Voice recognition is also being used as input into personal assistant applications such as Apple's Siri and Amazon's Alexa. Virtual Reality Headset These devices are typically used with computer games, simulators, and training applications. They are head-mounted devices that provide separate images for each eye. Most headsets include head motion and eye motion tracking sensors. These devices are also output devices delivering video and audio to the wearer. Incomplete 1.2.9.5 Check your understanding. Input devices. Incomplete question 1. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the Submit button below. What was the first type of input device? Submit. Show feedback. Incomplete question 2. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. A company is building a new secure data center and wants to limit access to authorized personnel. 
What would be the best type of input device to implement secure limited access? Incomplete question 3. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. True or false? Incomplete question 4. Reset. Show feedback. True. Reset. At self-checkout counters in large department stores. This is a multiple choice question. Once you have selected an option, select the submit button below. Submit. Show feedback. Show feedback. What? Complete 1.2.10.1 What are output devices? 1 to 10 output devices. Complete 1.2.10.1 What are output devices? 1.2.10.1 What are output devices? An output device takes binary information, ones and zeros, from the computer and converts it into a form that is easily understood by the user. Monitors and projectors are output devices that create visual and audio signals for the user. Virtual reality, VR, headsets are another type of output device. Televisions may also be output devices. Printers are visual output devices that create hard copies of computer files. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Select the tabs below for pictures of different output devices. Monitor. Monitor. Projector. VR headset. Printer. Projector. Monitor. Projector. VR headset. Printer. Monitor. Projector. VR headset. Printer. A tabbed content container. Content can be text, graphic, or both. Speakers and headphones are output devices that produce only audio signals. 
Output devices make it possible for users to interact with computers. Select each tab for pictures of speakers and headphones. Speakers Headphones Speakers Headphones Incomplete 1.2.10.2 monitors and projectors 1.2.10.2 monitors and projectors. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of each. Monitor. Most monitors use one of three types of technology, LCD, LED, or OLED. Liquid crystal display, LCD, has two polarizing filters with a liquid crystal solution between them. An electronic current aligns the crystals so that light can pass through or not pass through, creating the image. Light emitting diode, LED, is an LCD display that uses LED backlighting. LED has lower power consumption than standard LCD backlighting. The panel is thinner, lighter, brighter, and has better contrast than LCD. Organic LED, OLED, is a type of LED display that uses a layer of organic material which responds to electrical stimulus to emit light. Each pixel lights individually, resulting in much deeper black levels than LED. Projector most video projectors use LCD or DLP technology. DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. DLP uses a spinning color wheel with an array of mirrors. Each mirror corresponds to a pixel and reflects light toward or away from the projector optics, creating an image of up to 1024 shades of gray. The color wheel then adds the color data to complete the projected image. Different projectors have different numbers of lumens, which affects the level of brightness of the projected image. LCD projectors typically have more lumens, brighter, than DLP projectors. ANSI has a standardized procedure for testing projectors. Projectors tested with this procedure are quoted in ANSI lumens. Projectors can be easily compared on the basis of their brightness specifications. Brightness, white light output, measures the total amount of light projected in lumens. The color brightness specification measures red, green, and blue using the same approach used to measure brightness. Incomplete 1.2.10.3 VR and AR headsets 1.2.10.3 VR and AR headsets. Virtual reality, VR, uses computer technology to create a simulated, three-dimensional environment. The user feels immersed in this virtual world and manipulates it. A VR headset completely encases the upper portion of users' faces, not allowing in any ambient light from their surroundings. Most VR experiences have three-dimensional images that seem life-sized to the user. VR experiences also track a user's motions and adjust the images on the user's display accordingly. Augmented reality, AR, uses similar technology but superimposes images and audio over the real world in real time. AR can provide users with immediate access to information about their real surroundings. An AR headset usually does not close off ambient light to users, allowing them to see their real-life surroundings. Not all AR requires a headset. Some AR can simply be downloaded onto a smartphone. Pokemon Go is an early version of an AR game that uses a player's smartphone to see and capture virtual objects in the real world. Other AR devices are smart glasses. They weigh much less than the headsets and are often designed for a specific audience, such as cyclists. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. 
Select the arrows for a picture and description of each. VR headset. VR headsets can have specific hardware and software platforms. They may be tethered to a controller, standalone, or mobile. They may have a variety of sensors including motion, external visual positioning, cameras, motion tracking, accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. Resolution and refresh rates vary. AR headset. AR headsets and smart glasses come with a wide array of features. Most have a camera, motion sensors, GPS, a CPU, battery power, and a controller. Many also have storage, Bluetooth, speakers, and voice control. The Microsoft HoloLens is a headset with an integrated holographic processing unit. Complete 1.2.10.4 printers 1.2.10.4 Printers Printers are output devices that create hard copies of files. A hard copy might be on a sheet of paper. It could also be a plastic form created from a 3D printer. Today's printers may be wired, wireless, or both. They use different technology to create the image you see. All printers require printing material, such as ink, toner, liquid plastic, etc., and a method to place it accurately on the paper or extrude it into the desired shape. All printers have hardware that must be maintained. Most printers also have software, in the form of drivers that must be kept up to date. A tabbed content container Content can be text, graphic, or both. Select each tab for pictures of different types of printers. Inkjet printer. Impact printer. Inkjet printer. Impact printer. 3D printer. Thermal printer. Incomplete 1.2.10.5 speakers and headphones. 1.2.10.5 speakers and headphones. Slideshow. Select the next button to progress. Select the arrows for a picture and description of each. Speakers. Speakers are a type of auditory output device. Most computers and mobile devices have audio support either integrated into the motherboard or on an adapter card. Audio support includes ports that allow input and output of audio signals. The audio card has an amplifier to power headphones and external speakers. Headphones Headphones, earbuds, and the earphones found in headsets are all auditory output devices. These may be wired or wireless. Some are Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled. Incomplete 1.2.10.6 Check your understanding, visual and auditory output device characteristics. 1.2.10.6 Check your understanding, visual and auditory output device characteristics. This question component requires you to select the matching option. When you have selected your answer, select the Submit button. Match the visual and auditory output device to the characteristics description. Speakers Monitors VR headsets Headphones Projectors Printers AR headsets. They may have a variety of sensors including motion, external visual positioning, cameras, motion tracking, accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. Resolution and refresh rates vary. Most computers and mobile devices have audio support either integrated into the motherboard or on an adapter card. 
Audio support includes ports that allow input and output of audio signals. DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. DLP uses a spinning color wheel with an array of mirrors. Each mirror corresponds to a pixel and reflects light toward or away from the optics, creating an image of up to 1024 shades of gray. The color wheel then adds the color data to complete the image. These all have hardware that must be maintained, and most also have software, in the form of drivers, that must be kept up to date. LED is an LCD display that uses LED backlighting. LED has lower power consumption than standard LCD backlighting, so the panel can be thinner, lighter, and have better contrast. These may be wired or wireless. Some are Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled. These usually do not close off ambient light to users, allowing them to see their real-life surroundings. Submit. 1.2.10.6 Check your understanding, visual and auditory output device characteristics. Place the options in the following order. Headphones. Show feedback. Previous. Home. Next. One point three computer disassembly. Scroll to begin. Incomplete one point three point one the technician's toolkit. Incomplete 1.3.1.1 Video Explanation, Technician's Toolkit 1.3.1.1 Video Explanation, Technician's Toolkit Select Play to view the video. Click here to read the transcript of this video. Hello everyone! Imagine building a computer with your bare hands. Good thing we don't have to do that. We are here to look at the tools used to work both outside and inside our computer cases. We're gonna start here with ESD safety. I have an anti-static wrist strap here, and also I have an anti-static mat. With the anti-static wrist strap, we put it Put it around our wrist or Hello everyone. Imagine building a computer with your bare hands. Good thing we don't have to do that. We are here to look at the tools used to work both outside and inside our computer cases. We're going to start here with ESD safety. I have an anti-static wrist strap here and also I have an anti-static mat. With the anti-static wrist strap, we put it around our wrist or our ankle so it contacts our skin. You can even tighten it. Now, there's an alligator clip that can attach to ground. Ground for us can be a computer case or ground on an outlet. The anti-static wrist strap alligator clip can also connect directly to our anti-static mat. And this will ground ourselves correctly with our workspace. Now, as we continue, sometimes you may find a computer that has not been touched or cleaned in what seems like a decade. For situations like this, we can use a cleaning tool such as a compressed air can. When you get into a computer and you find out that a lot of computers can be completely disgusting inside, canned air like this can help us clean out the CPU heatsink, the CPU fan, the GPU heatsink and fan, and doing so allows us to keep our devices running cool and without errors. So many problems with computers is because of heat issues. And a can of compressed air should always be in your toolkit. Let's continue with screwdrivers and magnetic tips. Commonly, the magnet will be weak enough to not affect the sensitive devices within your computer. 
but they are usually strong enough to assist in not losing and or hmm, retrieving screws. If you've ever dropped a screw into your computer case, you'll understand this frustrating game of retrieval. Now, some kits may come with a device like this, an extraction tool. Besides retrieving lost screws, we should talk about the most common type of screws in use. The most common type of screws are Phillips screws. The Phillips head screwdriver is what we should have in our tool kit for most of our work. Now, some computers might use Torx or flathead screws, so we should have those screwdrivers in our kit as well. While working on a computer, we'll eventually have to verify network connectivity. We should have some basic network connectivity verification tools in our kit to verify cabling, cable rating, and functionality. This cable tester can save you from experiencing a variety of headaches. If a cable is bad, we should have tools like these crimpers over here that allow us to both cut and terminate cable. An organized storage case works wonders while working both inside and outside a computer case. This holds true when you're removing screws from a variety of different adapter cards, drives, motherboard standoffs, and more. Keeping things organized using cases allows us to save a lot of headaches from occurring. Keeping organized is the top tool of the IT professional. Get comfortable using the tools in your toolkit. Build out your own toolkit now, but keep in mind, your kit will continue to grow and become customized based on your evolving skills as you become an IT professional. Please select an option. 1.3.1.2 Check your understanding, Technician's Toolkit. Matching. Select from lists and then submit. Match the tool to the respective image. Please select an option. Option. Anti-static wristband. Extraction tool. Torx screwdriver. Crimpers. Cable tester. Reset. Show feedback. Incomplete 1.3.2 computer disassembly. Incomplete 1.3.2.1 Lab Safety 1.3.2.1 Lab Safety In this lab, you will use common safety procedures while building and or servicing computer hardware. Part 1. Personal Safety Part 2. Electrical Safety Part 3. Fire Safety Part 4. Compliance with Government Regulations Safety
1.3 Computer Disassembly Safety Safety.
Lab Safety Objectives In this lab, you will use common safety procedures Procedures while building and or servicing computer hardware. Part 1. Personal Safety Part 2. Electrical Safety This lab, you will use common safety procedures while building and or servicing computer hardware. Part 1. Personal Safety Part 2. Electrical Safety Part 3. Fire Safety Part 4. Compliance with Government Regulations. Background slash scenarios. Safe working conditions help prevent injury to people. And damage to computer equipment. A safe workspace is clean, organized, and properly lit. Everyone must understand and follow safety procedures. In this activity, you will review some of the safety procedures. Suggested resources. Internet access. Fire extinguisher. Safety goggles. Air filtration mask. Instructions Part 1. Personal Safety Some personal safety guidelines can prevent cuts, burns, electrical shock, and damage to eyesight. As a best practice, make sure that a fire extinguisher and first aid kit are available. Available Proper cable management can prevent tripping hazards in a network installation. Here are a few examples of basic safety precautions. Remove your watch and jewelry and secure loose clothing. Keep food and drinks out of your workspace. Wear safety goggles to prevent damage to eyesight. Wear an air filtration mask when there is dust or other air contaminants. Bend your knees when lifting heavy objects to avoid injuring your back. Before cleaning or repairing equipment, make sure that your tools are in good condition. Clean, repair, or replace items that are not functioning adequately. Question. What other simple precautions can you take to prevent injury or cause equipment damage while working with computer hardware? Type your answers here. Lab Safety Part 2. Electrical Safety Following electrical safety guidelines helps to prevent electrical fires, injuries, and fatalities. For example, some printer parts become hot during use. Power supplies contain high voltage. Questions What can you do to prevent injury or damage to printer parts? Type your answers here. What can you do to prevent injury or damage power supplies for computers? Type your answers here. Equipment grounding. To protect the technicians, electrical e equipment should be grounded to prevent electrocution. If the metal parts in the equipment becomes energized, the equipment ground provides a lower resistant path for the current to flow to the ground rather than through the handler of the faulty device. Questions Perform an internet search to answer the following questions. How do you ground devices such as PCs and printers? Type your answers here. How are large metal equipment?
Plug the device into a wall socket, but with the socket switched off, Earth will still be active. Then touch any unpainted part of the case slash PSU to ground yourself or a house radiator will do the job. Touch the power supply housing with your finger before touching any components inside the system. This technique works safely only if the power cord is attached to a grounded power outlet. Take the power supply out of the box and plug it into your wall. Then, make sure the power switch is flipped off. The power supply will then act as a ground, pulling any static you've built up and making it travel through your wall to the ground, where it'll then disappear. Utilize differential filters and transient suppression devices at the wired connections to shunt potentially destructive energy from one lead to another and to steer this energy to ground. Ground. Copyright 2023 Microsoft Privacy and Cookies Legal Copyright 2023 Microsoft Privacy and Cookies Legal. Advertise. Help. Feedback. Bing is your AI powered copilot for the web. Bing is your Bing is your AI powered copilot for the web. To ground devices such as PCs and printers, you can 123. Plug the device into a wall socket, but with the socket switched off, Earth will still be active. Then touch any unpainted part of the case slash PSU to ground yourself or a house radiator will do the job. Touch the power supply housing with your finger before touching any components inside the system. This technique works safely only if the power cord is attached to a grounded power outlet. Take the power supply out of the box and plug it into your wall. Then, make sure the power switch is flipped off. The power supply will then act as a ground, pulling any static you've built up and making it travel through your wall to the ground, where it'll then disappear. Utilize differential filters and transient suppression devices at the wired connections to shunt potentially destructive energy from one lead to another and to steer this energy to ground. How are large metal equipment racks grounded?
Large metal equipment racks are grounded by connecting them to a common grounding point, such as a bus bar, a grounding bar, or a metal stud on the rack's frame 123. This provides a path for the surge to be carried away from the equipment to the source, usually earth, for. Grounding also helps to protect the components inside the rack from electromagnetic interference by acting as a shield 5. Learn more. How are large metal equipment racks grounded? Note, in some countries, portable appliance testing is done to ensure that an equipment is safe to use. Part 3, Fire Safety Fire can spread rapidly and be very costly. Proper use of a fire extinguisher can prevent a small fire from getting out of control. Locate and read the instructions on the fire extinguishers in your workplace before you need to use them. When working with computer components, be alert for odors emitting from computers and electronic devices. When electronic components overheat or short out, they emit a burning smell. If there is a fire, follow these safety procedures. Never fight a fire that is out of control or not contained. Always have a planned fire escape route before beginning any work. Get out of the building quickly. Contact emergency services for help. Use a web browser or a fire extinguisher to review the proper procedure to use a fire extinguisher to answer the following questions. Questions How does the memory aid PASS help with remembering the basic rules of fire extinguisher operation? Type your answers here. Each type of fire extinguisher has specific chemicals to fight different types of fires. List the different types of fire extinguishers used in your country or region. Type your answers here. How does the Memory Aid PASS help with remembering the basic rules of fire extinguisher operation? The Memory Aid PASS helps with remembering the basic rules of fire extinguisher operation by providing a simple and easy to remember acronym for the four steps involved. Pull the Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to discharge the extinguishing agent. Pull the safety pin. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to discharge the extinguishing agent. Sweep the nozzle from side to side to cover the entire fire. This acronym can be helpful for people of all ages and backgrounds, and it can be especially useful in emergency situations when people may be feeling stressed or panicked. 
In addition to being easy to remember, the PASS acronym also covers the most important steps involved in using a fire extinguisher safely and effectively. By following these steps, people can increase their chances of putting out a small fire and preventing it from spreading. Here is a brief explanation of each step in the PASS acronym. Pull the safety pin. This will release the pressure in the extinguisher and allow you to discharge the extinguishing agent. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. This is important because the extinguishing agent will be most effective if it is directed at the source of the fire. Squeeze the handle to discharge the extinguishing agent. Use a slow and steady squeeze to discharge the extinguishing agent in a controlled manner. Sweep the nozzle from side to side to cover the entire fire. This will help to ensure that the entire fire is extinguished and prevent it from reigniting. It is important to note that the PASS acronym should only be used to extinguish small fires. If the fire is too large or uncontrollable, evacuate the area immediately and call 911. Backslash Detailed list Chat GPT Chat GPT Five main classes of fire extinction. Each type of fire extinguisher has specific chemicals to fight different types of fires. List the different types of fire extinguishers used in your country or region. ChatGPT In the United States, fire extinguishers are classified based on the types of fires they can effectively combat. There are five main classes of fire extinguishers, and each class is designed to tackle specific types of fires. Here, I'll provide a detailed list of these fire extinguisher classes and the types of fires they are suitable for. Class A Description Class A fire extinguishers are designed for ordinary combustibles, such as wood, paper, cloth, and some plastics. Extinguishing agent typically contain water or a dry chemical like monoammonium phosphate. Class B Description Class B fire extinguishers are intended for flammable liquids such as gasoline, oil, grease, and other petroleum-based products. Products Extinguishing agent usually contain dry chemical agents like sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate, foam, or carbon dioxide, CO2. Class C Description Class C fire extinguishers are designed for fires involving energized electrical equipment, including appliances, wiring, and fuse boxes. Extinguishing agent typically use non-conductive agents like carbon dioxide, CO2, or dry chemical powders. Class D Description Class D fire extinguishers are specifically for combustible metals, such as magnesium, sodium, or titanium. Extinguishing agent use dry powders like sodium chloride or sodium carbonate to smother the fire. Class K Description, Class K fire extinguishers are intended for fires involving cooking oils and fats, common in commercial kitchens. Extinguishing agent, contain a special potassium acetate-based agent that reacts with cooking oils to create a soapy foam that cools and suppresses the fire. These are the standard fire extinguisher classes in the United States, and each class corresponds to a specific type of fire.
When selecting a fire extinguisher for a particular location or use, it's essential to consider the potential fire hazards in that area. Some fire extinguishers are multi-class and can be used on a variety of fires, while others are designed for specific environments where certain types of fires are more likely to occur. It's important to check the labeling on the fire extinguisher to ensure it is appropriate for the potential fire risks in a given location and to follow the manufacturer's guidelines for proper use and maintenance. Additionally, in the U.S., fire safety regulations may vary by state and local jurisdiction, so it's important to be aware of any specific requirements in your area. Part 4 Compliance with Government Regulations When maintaining a PC or installing new equipment, you should be aware of your compliance to local government regulation with regards to health and safety laws, building codes, and environmental regulations. Lab Safety Health and Safety Laws for example, Occupational Safety and Health Administration OSHA, standards are a set of guidelines and requirements to minimize health and safety risks in United States-based workplaces. The employers provide safe and healthy working environments for their employees. The employees should be informed and complied with the guidelines, report any hazards and modify or install any equipment or materials without proper authorization. Questions Perform an internet search to locate the governing body for health and safety in the workplace for your country. Record the official title and link to the website. Type your answers here. Using the answer to previous question, document the safety guidance or standards about electrical safety from the website. Be sure to include anything that could prevent electrical hazards. Type your answers here. Perform an internet search to locate the governing body for health and safety in the workplace for your country. Record the official title and link to the website. View the governing body for health and safety in the workplace for the United States is the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. Official title, Occupational Safety and Health Administration website. BARD may display inaccurate or offensive information that doesn't represent Google's views. BARD Privacy Notice Perform an internet search to locate the Official title, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, aided by the OCU and local government employees. Perform an internet search to locate.